Hello again, YouTube. I'm sorry I've been gone for like five months. I've been really, really busy with school and just haven't had time to vlog. But it is April, and that is the month that, for whatever reason, YouTubers decide that they want to post more video. So I'm going to do that as well. And I put out a tweet this morning asking what I should talk about in my first video back. And one of my friends, my friend Sean, um, told me that I should talk about Skiffle. And so we're going to talk about Skiffle. For those of you who don't know, Skiffle is a genre of music. It is a genre that was a precursor to rock and roll. It developed in the United States, um, in the southern United States specifically, and it was popular from the 1920s up through the 1940s where it kind of started to fade. Um, it's a combination of country, traditional jazz, and early blues. It was mainly played on guitars, banjos, extremely basic percussion, washboards, and what's called a T-chest bass. The T-chest bass is essentially where you take a crate you put a stick out the top of it, and then you run a string from the top of the stick down to the corner of the box and pluck it as if it were like a harp string, but there's only one of them, and so you can only really play one note. So in case you couldn't tell based on those instruments, the songs of Skiffle were extremely simple. They usually had one to two chords and occasionally three or four. They were usually reworked versions of classic folk, jazz, and blues songs, which made them really easy to pick up for young musicians and that's going to be important as we move along here. So I've made a playlist of very famous Skiffle acts, well not very famous, but famous in the world of Skiffle, as well as influential Skiffle songs. I will put an annotation on this video in the corner that will have a link to that playlist as well as a link down in the description. So if you want to listen to some Skiffle and learn where rock and roll came from, go ahead and click on that and check it out, it's pretty interesting. Um, the first artist that I feature in that playlist is Gus Cannon's Jug Stompers, and Gus Cannon's Jug Stompers were one of the original Skiffle acts in the 1920s. They combined blues and country, which would later be a key combination in the forming of rock and roll. And that's especially easy to hear in the harmonica and vocal line on the song that I picked, because it has like a very early rock and roll feel to it, like it sounds like a melody that could have come out of a Chuck Berry song or a Jerry Lee Lewis song. Then the next artist that I feature there is Lead Belly, and if you know anything about early rock and roll, you've probably heard a Lead Belly song or a cover of a Lead Belly song. He was a pioneer of the blues. He wrote countless country and blues songs, as well as country blues hybrid songs, which would ultimately be picked up by skiffle artists, and then eventually picked up by rock and roll artists like Elvis Presley and the Animals. And in fact, Elvis and the Animals both covered C.C. Rider, which is a song that was re fairly popular for Lead Belly, really popular for Ma Rainey, and was covered by countless skiffle and rock and roll acts throughout the ages. Excuse my phone vibrating. Then we have Lonnie Donegan. No skiffle figure has been more important to rock and roll than Lonnie Donegan. Lonnie Donegan was kind of the leader of the British skiffle revival. He formed a skiffle group and started playing as the opener for the jazz group that he was a part of, and that actually became more popular than the jazz group, so they broke off and became Lonnie Donegan's skiffle band. Um, they were hugely popular with British young men in the 50s because they talked about railroads and prison and America and things that young men in Britain in the 50s were interested in. And in case you weren't aware, there were a lot of really famous people who were teenagers in the 50s in Britain. People like David Gilmour, John Lennon, and Mick Jagger. All of which listened to Lonnie Donegan, idolized him, and formed skiffle bands to cover his songs. In fact, if I had to pick two musicians who I feel like John Lennon emanates the most in his early work, it's Lonnie Donegan and Buddy Holly. Which that's a whole nother story if you're interested in the history of John Lennon as well as the history of skiffle because they talk about it a lot. I suggest this book. It's called John Lennon the Life. It's by Philip Norman, and it is the most comprehensive biography of any rock star I've ever read. It talks about all sorts of John Lennon's musical interests and motivations for starting a band, and it talks a lot about the Quarrymen, which are the skiffle band that John Lennon formed, which ultimately became the Beatles. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I strongly suggest picking up that book. You can also learn a lot more about the forming of rock and roll through it, which is really nice. So in the playlist, there are two Lonnie Donegan songs, one that John Lennon was especially fond of called Rock Island Line, and one that came a little bit later called Does Your Chewing Gum Lose Flavor, which was another big hit of his, and that was kind of the last big hit of the Skiffle revival. 
Then the fourth group that we have in the playlist is Chaz McDevitt's Skiffle Group. Now, they were a lesser group. In fact, you probably won't read about them in very many places. But the song that I picked from them is very reminiscent of early rock and roll. You can really hear the rock starting to form. There's a lot of rhythms that are in common with rock and roll and things like that. So, as you can tell, just based on my descriptions of the songs in the playlist, Skiffle was really important to the rise of rock and roll. It was the most accessible music for young people to learn to play. The instruments were cheap, you could usually make them out of household objects, and young British males were fascinated with the subject matter. But the other thing that we have to keep in mind is its connection to traditional jazz. You see, in the 50s, Britain moved away from the swing jazz that was popular in America and started focusing more on traditional jazz. And traditional jazz usually has more strict fans who listen to specifically tra traditional jazz and nothing else. And so a lot of these traditional jazz clubs wouldn't allow the early rock and rollers on stage. But these rock and rollers could play skiffle songs. And so they would form skiffle groups and then throw in skiffleized versions of rock songs. And this is how they would get the performance experience that also ultimately led them to form rock bands. So a lot of the most famous rockers of the 60s and 70s started out in skiffle bands, which is why skiffle is important. So I strongly urge you to click on the link and check out at least one or two of the songs in the playlist. It's kind of a weird genre. For some people, it's hard to listen to. I find it interesting, but only because I know the history behind it and I'm a dork. So if you want to check that out, please feel free to do so. Also, if you want to like this video, pass it on to your friends, please feel free to do so. If you don't, don't do it. It's your life. I don't really care. But if you enjoy listening to me talk, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try and post more videos now that we're in April and things are starting to slow down in my life a little bit. So in comments, if you could tell me things that you want me to talk about, whether it's obscure musical genres or things from my life or just random nonsense that you feel like I could talk about and make into something, then feel free to give me some feedback. I would love it. Otherwise, I will hopefully see you guys here soon in another video. Thanks again. Bye.